Hazel, were you covering the the Ronnie and Steve and Matt when Ronnie walked out? Um, yes, the, yes, okay, I was. Because I, I, yeah. I, I feel like I remember you interviewing Ronnie, which must have been one of the more uh, testing. Um, no, well, actually, what what happened was, Mark, um, Ronnie shook your hand and mm, walked out. Yeah. Were you were you four were you four nil up four at one. that point, Stephen? Four, four one, one yeah. right? And we'd actually, I mean, this is true. John, Steve, and I had actually just tucked into a sandwich in the studio because normally <laughs> what happens, and Stephen, Stephen will bag us up here. We usually sort of wait to eat something until we've gone live, and then there's a kind of at least yeah. a sort of ten <laughs> minutes where in the first frame just eat something for the afternoon. Great fish and mango salads. Great fish and mango salads. That's it. Yes, and um, one particular supermarket's um, delicatessen <laughs> does very well during our sticker tournaments, um, but. Yeah, and we'd literally just sort of started on the lunch and then suddenly walked out. We thought, what is going on? So we were filling and filling and filling, um, not with food, but but until we knew what was happening. And I, I remember, I, I think it was Mike Ganley got news to us that he had indeed um, stopped. And it was a really it was a really significant moment, actually, um, when you think back on it, particularly in the context of how he's managed to turn that period yeah. of crisis in terms of reform around and I mean I, I really take my hat off to the man I think he's a phenomenal um, player and a phenomenally strong mind to have mm. had the wherewithal to go to Steve Peters and say right I I actually have a problem here and I'm, I wonder if you can help I mean that took mm. a lot of guts but what an incredible turnaround in that man's ability to control his emotion in these moments it's, really it's night and day isn't it yeah that man, there must be I, I mean Obviously, he's won hundreds of matches, and we've done hundreds of post-match interviews. It's, it's, you never know what you're going to get, do you, when you're sat in that studio no. when he comes in? No, no, <laughs> and, and, that's, and that's a fascination. You must be relieved when, when he's chatting. You must be relieved, especially we're live on TV. Well, yeah, I mean, because I, I guess that's that's the thrill as well, isn't it? Because I mean, Ronnie is Ronnie is Ronnie, um, and he always has something to say. Um, but you're right. He's got to a point now where he's clearly, he clearly, um, is possibly a little bored, as you would be having yeah. <laughs> been dragged into studios all your career to talk about what you've just done five minutes ago. And I know it's part of the process of making television. And and Ronnie's not daft. He's 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 now part of the TV process himself, working for Eurosport very successfully too. So it's 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 just part of the deal, isn't it? It's part of the game. Um, but. But he's he's not he's not the only one that you're interested in speaking to after after a match. I mean, in, in lots of different sports, it was always a. I mean, like for example, when I used to speak to Tiger Woods, um, it was always <laughs> you always had the same feeling that okay, someone's coming in. You have to be sort of on your game here because if if you ask Tiger Wood uh, uh, Tiger Woods a banal question, um, you could never get away with well. Round of 71 today, uh, Tiger, body, body. Right? You had to actually challenge him. Mm. You actually had to yeah, ask yeah. him something to, to elicit something meaning, meaningful from yeah. him. I, I think in this in the same way, it, it, again, it just it depends what sort of mood Rory's in uh, when he comes in. But hey, it's always it's always a great pleasure. And indeed, it's a great honour to have him in the studio anytime. So um, regardless of what mood he's in, uh, yeah. he's always I think that's, that's a good thing about you, as you don't know what you're going to yeah. do, what to expect. I think that's, that's the yeah. beauty of him. In terms Absolutely. of in the TV, and we've yeah. said it before, it's why people <clears throat> it's why people like snooker. It, it doesn't feel like people are just trotting out, especially if, if someone's just lost a match that took nine hours or something. You you want to see their emotion, really. It's not just Ronnie. Yeah. Many's the time we've seen you interview people who are visibly hurting after after a defeat. Well, or, you know, I mean, I I can honestly say, Mark. I mean, the man next to you at the moment in this podcast was famously monosyllabic on occasions after mm. he. <laughs> Had been defeated. I mean, there were a one word, uh, there were a whole one word press conferences from you at some stage. Yeah. I don't Stephen, know how I got my miserable do name. I don't, I don't know how I got my miserable <laughs> so I really do. We've talked before about how, how Stephen, uh, was, by his own admission, was one of the toughest interviewees. It's a wonder he got this podcast gig, actually. The guy's made a name for himself for not wanting to talk about Snooker. <laughs> so here we go, Stephen. In, in terms of how you were then and how you perceive interviewees coming into studio now, how how do you balance the two sides of that equation? It's it's how because you've got to feel like okay, I know how you feel because you just mm. lost a match, you know. Especially if you got to speak to the the loser, you know what they're how they're feeling. And and but you know as 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 you've got a job to do, haven't you? You've got to try and get something out out of this. But I mean, fortunately, I haven't done a lot of interviews with losing players yet. I've been in the studio, and, and normally it's the winner that comes in, mm. and it's fine. 
Um, but watching, you know, Rob Walker obviously has to do all the losers interviews as well. And, and you, you, the, I'm, I've got to admit, there's not many players that don't speak. You know, mm-hmm. I, I think so. I, I, Steve and I were like just the worst losers, and we we're just terrible um, <laughs> to, to, to interview after we'd lost. Um, and and I do yeah, I feel, I feel for it. Rob sometimes, but um, but yeah, I, I totally understand how the players feel. You literally, I mean, the, the the Crucible, especially to name one venue, you come out those stage doors, and Rob's waiting for you, and sticks mm. a microphone in your face. How do you feel? <laughs> you I have to say. Oh yeah, of, great! Of all the people that of all the people that do it, I think he's absolutely brilliant at it because he has such an empathetic tone and and he really knows these guys now and they genuinely trust him. He's no, he's never going to throw them under the bus, and I, I think everybody respects him for that. He's really good at yeah. it. He was born for the job, really. He's yeah, a very difficult yeah. man to be grumpy with. I would have thought. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> Anytime, yeah.